Check it out now, y'all. Nano Hub U Online Instruction. Hi, welcome to the Nano Hub U course Thermal Energy at the Nanoscale. I'm Tim Fisher from Purdue University, and today we're going to talk about Planck's law, which is a thermal radiation law and involves photons. Uh, but it illustrates a lot of the concepts that we've been developing so far, things like density of states and allowable uh, states, energy levels, and so forth. So it's all within the context of this, this week's uh, topic of, of carrier statistics. So we'll start with Planck's law. What we'll end up with uh, by the end of the next lecture will be uh, the, the final result for black body radiation. Uh, but in general, this, the Planck's law was derived in the early 20th century and it was one of the monumental achievements of physics at the time because it described how uh, a, an object's temperature affected the, its, uh, the emission that comes from it. Um, it was derived, therefore, for this uh, what we call thermal radiation or thermal photon emission, and that's the most interesting thing uh, for, for this course uh, is the, the thermal transport processes and properties. Um, and it is applicable generally to phonons because phonons and photons obey Bose-Einstein statistics. Now, I say it's applicable generally. There are differences between the two because photons have a different dispersion relation than phonons do. And so that dispersion relation, for example, governs the speed with which they carry energy. So that that's what we've been calling the group velocity, for example. But the Bose-Einstein statistics uh, helps us to, to, make, to draw an awful lot of parallels between the two. And I think it's, it's very illustrative of, of what we've been doing. We're going to start with thinking about photons inside of a box. So this is the particle in a box problem that many of you have probably seen before, but if you haven't, that's okay, we'll go through it. In essence, this box, this we'll, we'll assume that it's a cube. Each side has length L. And we'll say that inside this box is a boson gas, uh, a gas in the sense that it's filling all the space inside the box. Now, there's a little bit of a difference between this problem and what we've been doing. Um, even with, with bosons, and that is that we don't have a finite discrete lattice sitting inside of our box, and so we can really have all kinds of different wavelengths. They can almost be, well, they can be as short as we want them to be um, because uh, they, they don't require a, a lattice to move on. The, the wavelength, the wavelengths will be, uh, disc, they will be discrete in the sense that only certain wavelengths will be allowable uh, such that half wave uh, half waves will fit inside the box. So I'll kind of draw that um, here just to just to show what I'm talking about. The first mode that would fit inside the box because of the symmetry that we would impose on the problem would be like that. And then it's then a full wavelength would be the next uh, the next level. Uh, it would be a sh the next shorter wavelength and so on and so forth. Um, so this gives us, again, another discretization of the wavelength space, and therefore that's going to give us a discretization of the wave vector space. Now we're especially interested in defining a dispersion relation for these photons. And first of all, I want to point out, I'll use the symbol epsilon to denote photons energies just to keep it distinct from electrons where we're using capital E. We're also using capital E for phonons but in that case we we tend to focus more on the frequency space so omega. So for photons also uh, energy equals h bar omega which we could write as h nu if we wanted slightly different uh, coordinates so h now is just regular Planck's constant and nu is the regular frequency. And this, this relation is actually our dispersion relation where we have a fixed group velocity C, that's the speed of light, uh, and we find that energy is proportional to one divided by the wavelength. Well, one divided by the wave, wavelength is proportional to wave number. So this is our, our wave vector. And so this means that we have a linear dispersion. We actually find something similar with uh, with electrons and phonons in certain cases. So for example, graphene has a linear dispersion relation uh, around the k-points in graphene. And that causes a lot of interesting things about the way that 
they might be used for electronic devices. Uh, we won't go into that, but uh, other courses on NanoHub you have, have covered that and continue to cover it. Phonons also ha can have a linear-like dispersion. We're going to talk about that a lot going forward. It's actually an approximation that's very common, but for now we'll keep things general. We, we are happy here that we have, we, we know the dispersion relation. I'm not going to write K, the wave vector here, because I just don't want to confuse the issue with all of the Ks floating around. So um, we'll leave it at that, and we'll, we'll mainly work when we're having photons. We'll work in wavelength space if we want to if we want to uh, have a, a wave-like entity or a wave-like spectrum. So the uh, what we're most interested in is the average energy in a given mode. So that's at a certain frequency or wavelength, um, and we need to calculate that again going back to our statistics from before. Um, the energies, and th this is the first time we'll introduce this idea of, of an internal energy or specific energy uh, U. So inside of this box, again, it's filled with photons all over the place. And inside of this box, we want to know if we took a piece of space inside of that box, what would be the energy per unit volume, If I, at least if I averaged over everything. And so we can express that by, first of all, knowing the average energy of a given mode. So that's the first term, E sub nu. And then we will weight that by the density of states at that particular energy epsilon, and we'll integrate over all such energies. And that will give us uh, the, the specific energy in the box. It's specific in the sense that it's per unit volume. And a lot of times, it, for those who study thermodynamics, the specific energy or the specific thermodynamic quantity is per unit mass. But of course, we're going to use volume as our specific basis. Uh, and, and if you wanted to convert to mass, of course, you would uh, you would do that through the density. Of course, with photons, it's awfully hard to, to think about uh, converting them to mass. So that's another reason why we use volume here. The density of states is something that we'll talk about for these, um, for these photons. The density of states for photons, just like, it, just like for electrons and phonons before, the density of states will depend on the dispersion relation. This average energy of a given mode can be expressed and is shown here and this is uh, actually, I, it should be a little bit familiar to you. It's the energy of the mode, epsilon, multiplied by the Bose-Einstein distribution function, or the average occupation number. And so that's, the, that's where the denominator comes from. And so that'll give us the average energy of a given mode. So in this case, you can kind of think of it as a, a photon has an energy epsilon, and then I'm taking an average of the number of photons that are around with that energy, and that's that I get that from the distribution function. Now this is uh, we something where we'll, we won't derive the density of states for these photons here. Um, it's not too difficult to do. We might have you do it as an exercise. Uh, but what we find is that the density of states for this linear dispersion uh, goes as the energy squared. And so that's, we've, we've seen that a few times, uh, and, and so it shouldn't be too surprising. Um, and when we do the substitutions, put all of these things, the, these two terms, the average energy of a mode and, um, and the, uh, the density of states, together into this integral, we find that we can express the specific internal energy U as an integral over energy space. It looks pretty simple. It looks like it's something we could deal with mathematically if we needed to. And indeed, that, that should be the case. I want to take a, a, an aside here a little bit because we're not just interested in total energy or total energy per unit volume. Often we're interested in the energy spectrum. How is energy distributed, so that the, the total or averaged energy, how is that distributed along some axis, some spectrum, some dependency? And so here we're showing that um, we've already covered the, the uh, energy spectrum. That's what we've expressed it in so far. And so this U prime term, I'm going to try to be careful with the terminology here. U prime would be the spectral energy or the spectral specific energy. But then I'm going to express it in different spectra. So this is the energy spectrum. Also, the wavelength spectrum is of interest. So these 
arguments to that function will tell you what what the function should look like or be expressed in terms of and and the units of these things of these different u primes that, that are showing up here are different because my variable of integration for each one is different and so that's a subtlety that sometimes um, is is lost on students at first and we want to make sure that that we're very clear about that this uh, the third term here is the regular frequency and the last one is the angular frequency we've already shown where this first term comes from this is really what we've already derived for this this first spectral energy um, and then if we wanted to do it in in uh, wavelength space which is very common this is where remember we're talking about photons so at some point we're going to look at the spectrum that's a very common thing to do um, in terms of wavelength usually expressed in microns um, or nanometers and so the wavelength spectral energy density is here um, and finally the, the the frequencies are the last two what I'd like to, to point out is that we do we have a cubic energy dependence and so that's you know something that that stands out and it's it's pretty obvious from the both the energy term the energy spectrum and both frequency spectra the wavelength is, is a lot different because in that case energy is inversely proportional to wavelength and we have to do a wavelength integration and so um, it's it's maybe not quite as intuitive as the other three so with that I'm gonna uh, stop here and, and in the next lecture we'll pick up um, more details about uh, how we can use this internal energy to express uh, the intensity of the of the radiation that comes out or that sits inside of the box and then comes out of the box and is observable. So um, just to summarize today, uh, what we've been able to do, I hope, is to use some statistical mechanical principles uh, and relate those to calculating a meaningful energy. In this case, we were calculating the energy density or the specific energy of a photon gas. And in order to get there, we had to combine a bunch of different kinds of physics to, to reach a point where we had a sort of a meaningful result. And we'll talk about uh, what, what those results look like um, in the next lecture. So thank you for your attention. I'll see you next time.